Saturday racing at Sha Tin with six on the turf, C plus three and four on the all weather. Paul Ellie is here and about to guide us through some selections and we get things underway on the all weather with a class five over the 1650. Noble win, robot fighter, V Love You, Cool Blue all on the class drop. V Love You blinkers on, Cool Blue has the visor off. Asian one minus the visor, pacifies with the cowls go back on. Charming Steed, Earplugs, Visor and Crossover Nose Band are off. And Chiron is a two-time course and distance winner, Paul, with a superb move, the leader. Yeah, look, he's drawn wide, but uh, he's got the apprentice claim, so I think he can get across and lead. Eagle Run, him and Nebula go forward horses. Charming Steed, likewise. All is ready, he's drawn wide. He's going to have to go back with Chiron. We start with a class dropper. Noble Wind comes into this grade for the first time. He has had one start on the all weather. That was where he ran fifth behind G Liner in class four. This is his most recent outing on the turf when sixth behind the Smart Voyage Samurai. Yeah, so look at this horse here. He, he was slightly slow away. He's drawn nicely here in barrier three. They went really slow, yet he still made up really good ground along the inside here. It was a really good run. He's down into this um, class five for the first time. Coming back onto your weather, as you mentioned, that run wasn't too bad for fifth behind G-Liner. So with that under his belt, he did arrive on a rating of 63. I think he's at a winnable rating. Race one, number one, a good report with a noble win. Second is an all-weather race with MM Nebula eight, superb move third, and Green Laser is out wider. MM Nebula, if form is anything to go by, Paul, should appreciate coming back to the 1650. Yeah, you think he'll, he'll be really appreciative of that. Look, um, I think superb move here. It was a good run from him. Look, from barrier number 14, I think they'll be a lot more positive than he was here from barrier three, set behind. He's got the light weight with a 10-pound claim. So I think he's definitely a chance in the race, uh, which is um, a superb move. So uh, I expect him to run well. But as you say, um, I think see, do see improvement. Um, from some of those other horses you mentioned as well. Nice birdie has won out of that race already. And finally, a trial for Chiron, who doesn't win out of turn, but when he does win, it's over the 1650 metres on the all-weather at Chartin. So he's on the right um, course, he's at the right uh, distance as well. He's drawn barrier 11, so he's going to have to go all the way back. Uh, coming back to the 1650 from the 1200 uh, definitely looks better for him. So, like, he was on the cusp, but uh, you can see him finishing off strongly. But he's a horse you get that's hard to trust because he doesn't win out of ten. He did have one of the apprentices on that morning down there on the inside, so would have had no weight on his back there. Chiron, but as easy as race one, number one. Going to go that way, yeah. Noble win. I think the downgrader can uh, get get straight out of class five. Superb move if he can get across. Then Asian one. He's a class four winner in class five. Cool blue yet to win, but uh, does finish off his races strongly. One eight seven four. The Purton and Size combo for Paul to take the opener on Saturday afternoon. And race number two is the first trip around the turf on Saturday afternoon. A class four over the 1400 metres with Robot Master on the class drop. Sugar Ball has the cheek pieces off. Happy Daily's a three time course and distance winner. Super Unicorn has the hood going on. Winning Turner's on debut. He has had eight trials further down. Volcanus's had a stable change. Was with Benno Young now with me. Joy Cheap pieces off and Strath Barry goes to the 1400 for the first time, Paul. Yeah, look, uh, War of Courage looks the uh, the main leader in this race, so I think he can get across and lead. Sugar Ball, another one that can uh, go forward. Uh, winning turn can get a nice run in behind the debutante. Uh, horses going back, Super Unicorn from a, from his draw, sixth generation, and seizing the moment might have to go back as well. We start with a replay of the likely leader in War of Courage, and he's up outside Voyage Samurai, six generations down on the inside. He's had a rather quiet trial since, but he did make some ground when fifth in that trial behind Sunny Darling, but War of Courage looks to get a good opportunity here, doesn't he? Yeah, look, he looks the only leader, and if he can dictate in front, which I think he can do, uh, he's going to be tough to beat, I think, because, look, Voyage Samurai's uh, a very progressive horse. These two uh, went went uh, forward. Now, his last... Uh, well, he has one of 63 rating, so he's down to a 54 rating from a draw where he can dictate. He looks the likely winner for me. Yeah, that's a good report for War of Courage. So we're playing minor placings. Does Invincible Lucky figure in those... Uh, Minor numbers. There he is back in the field here. Happy Daly is out wide. We'll see his trial shortly. This race, Invincible Lucky, ran 13th. And uh, this was race number 412. So it's actually two ago. He's since run 13th. And he's had wide draws his last two. Yeah, look, he's going to get back and run on. But there's definitely ability there with this horse. 
Uh, I have included him. I think he's a good chance. And you can see him running on really nicely in this one. Didn't really get the race. and it, it, Things didn't go his way last time. So I think he can bounce back. Uh, happy daily I can't have uh, from Barrier 13. I think he's just going to get too far back. He has had a trial, has Invincible Lucky. Here is Happy Daly. Uh, this is his trial, Paul, but uh, despite this and the fact that he leads and trials well, the barrier draws come out and it's made life very, very difficult for him. It has, hasn't it? It was a very slow trial, uh, over 1,600. So he's back to the 1,400 metres here. Um, look, he won the trial, he did what he had to do, but look, he doesn't win out of turn. He's only a three-time winner from his 42 starts from barrier 13. If they do go slow in front, which it is more than possible, it's going to be hard. If he does go forward, he could be trapped wide. So that's... I just don't think the race will suit him. Gold Tack comes out of that trial and he has placed at Happy Valley on Wednesday night. He is not in, but War of Courage is. Yeah, I think he can win this race, War of Courage. He's well rated. He goes on top. He's a, the likely leader, Invincible Lucky. Seizing the moment, he's another really well rated horse. His last win was off 70. He's now down to a 58 rating. And Super Unicorn, up to 1,400 metres with the hood going on. I think he can run on. I'm waiting for him for a mile, actually, Super Unicorn, but I still think he can run well over the 14. 5, 10, 3 and 8. Paul, very keen on War of Courage. The play is just a win bet. Race 2, number 5. Now to race number three, and it's back onto the all-weather for this race, and a class three over the 1,200 metres, an Apache pass. He's a three-time winner, all over 1650, just his second go course and distance. Rewards Mile has the pacifiers going on. He's had three trials since scratched lame on the 29th of November. Sing Dragon's looking for three in a row. Victory Moments ran second to Sing Dragon at his last two starts. And we've got Lightning Bowl, the two-time course and distance winner. Hong Kong Hall and Montefruta down the bottom of last start winner coming up in grade as Sing Dragon leads them up all. Yeah, look, he led uh, Campione really easily last time. I think he can do the same. Hong Kong Hall is an, another uh, front runner who comes onto the surface for the first time. Patchy Pass, uh, look, he's coming back in distance, so we'll see if he can still possess some of that gate speed. Magniac, Montefruta, a reward smile, and Lightning Bolt will have to go back on it. Sing Dragon's been burning up the dirt. He's trained by Mark Newton. Mark Sing Dragon certainly found a home on the all weather here in Hong Kong. Yeah, look, he's in really good form. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful it's not just uh, the, the uh, surface that's brought the best out of him. I think, you know, when he arrived here, he hadn't raced for over 12 months, so he probably needed those first couple of runs on the turf anyway. But uh, while these races are available, we'll take advantage of them. Absolutely. All of his races in Australia were on the turf. What made the decision to try him on the all-weather? Oh, look, a couple of his trials were, were very good and, and he works well on it. He's a horse with a big comfortable stride on, on, on the all weather so uh, it was worth giving him a try and it's, it's proved fruitful so far. You must have been very proud the way he dug deep to score last time. Yeah, look, Frankie's horse came to him like he, like he had him and um, you know, on the line he was drawing away so he, you know, he showed a little bit of heart there. Frankie gets you with a bit of a weight turnaround this week but uh, your guy is in form, another run fitter. Ideally, you'd like to lead with him again? Yeah, I think from the gate that uh, looks to be the uh, first option, um, as long as he gets away well. You know, he showed he can run time, and he, you know, both times he's won, he, he's run for quick time, you know, throughout the whole the, the race without much of a rest. So, you know, he uh, does the same tomorrow. Uh, they've got to beat him. On your stable, full credit. When can we see him again? What a, a super win that was last time. Yeah, look, he'll run on the 28th on uh, Champions Day. Um, he's come on really nicely since that uh, win. He's a nice, relaxed horse. He never overdoes himself, which is, you know, the, the attitude they need to have here in Hong Kong. Uh, he may have been a little flattered the other day from Barrier 1 and the big shower of rain prior to that race, but I think, you know, a natural improvement uh, that he's shown all the way through here, he's going to make a fairly decent grade horse. Can't wait to see him again, even if he was flattered by the rain ball. It was a stunning victory by full credit. But we need to get back to race number three, Montefruta. Now, this is over 1,200 metres, but it was a grade down. It was class four last time. He'd been pretty hit and miss before this. He'd gone one good fourth in class three and didn't have much else around until this night. 
appreciated the class drop and roared down the outside to win. He did. It's just whether he can come back up into this class now and do it again. But he's got a few th things in his favour. He's got this really light weight. He's got barrier number two. And he has hit a bit of form. So, look, I'm going to include him on a minor line. I think he's he is a chance. That's a good report for Montefruta. And now a trial for Reward Smile, who's had the three of them. And this is his last one, where he runs fourth behind the very smart galloper in Storm Rider. Nice enough trial here, but this was on the grass. Was, hasn't raced on the ill weather at this stage, so that's the big query for him. He's drawn the outside barrier number eight. Has one fresh up in the past, so that is that is a positive. Uh, uh, pacifiers on, as they normally do with John Size, on the ill weather for the first time. So, look, it was a quiet enough trial for him. It's just the, the, the um, surface. That's their query for me. He has had the 10 starts for two wins, and both have been over 1,200 metres, one at Happy Valley, one on at the Sha Tin Turf Circuit. Can he win again, Sing Dragon? I think he can. He's unbeaten on the surface, two from two. I think he can go three from three. He can beat victory moments again. Um, so I think it'll be the same. Quinella, four to beat five. Montefruit, it was a better run from Campione. Look, he's one of a 92 rating and he's down to 66. Surely he's getting close to a rating where he can win again. Four, five, nine, six. Poor old victory moments to run second to his nemesis. Sing Dragon again for Paul in race number three. Race number four are flying a 1,000 metre class four this one. And we start with the Prince of Porty, who's unbeaten in this grade. Super Commander has a visor and a tongue tie going on. Chateau Neff excuses at his second start after winning impressively on debut. Yeah, Mucus and pulled up lame. We've got Karahi and Draco both making their debuts. Super 10 has the cross nose band off and the tongue tie going on. Gimme 5 has the cheek pieces on. Fancy start pacifiers off and the pacifiers with cows are added to him. Paul and Super Commander from Barrier 14 is going to love that. He's perfect. He'll go straight to the front. The great mass has been going forward. Uh, Karahi is a, is a debutant, but he's shown a bit of pace in his three trials. Uh, Chateau Nerf's another one that can uh, go forward, even though he's back in trip. Super 10, like he leads over a mile, but uh, this is down the straight thousand. It's the first time he's been over the thousand for a long, long time. He's run fourth, but he's only go down the straight. But as Paul said, it was quite some time ago. More recently, Prosecco has been flying down the straight, and he's trained by Chris So. Chrissy finally got the job done last time for Prosecco for a deserved win. Yes, yes, very, very lucky. We found a, the, the race for suit for him. So, you know, I think it's a, a bit lucky because um, when he, after he bled, uh, so, you know, we give him a break and then we trial him, you know, on the thousand meters in Chongfa. So, you know, he's trial really nice. That's why I tell the owner, you know, maybe we try on the thousand. Are you sorry he didn't try the 1,000 metres sooner with how well he's raced down the straight? Yeah, because it's a long time before, because it seems like the horse, you know, I think, you know, he, he ran 14 is OK. But, you know, but we find out, you know, now maybe, 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 maybe a bit weak, you know, in the class 4,000 metres. Uh, I think, you know, and, and, and the first time we put him in there, you know, he ran really good. He just, he stuck in the inside, you know, he come... He come late, you know, and last time he's very lucky, you know, we, 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 the, the race is open, you know, he, he hit the lines wrong. And uh, I hope, you know, this time because we get a draw, draw, draw two, you know, I hope, you know, he, he, he still in, keep improving. Down in the weights again, have you been happy with his work since that last run? Yes, yes, he's come back very well, eat well, you know, everything, everything's good, you know, I hope, you know, he, he, he perform again. Talking of everything being good, your stable's going really well. You must be happy with how things are trucking the last month or two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, the last couple of meetings, we pick up a couple of winners, you know, but it's not enough. We have to keep going. <laughs> there he is, Chris O, talking about Prosecco. Paul, we're going to talk about Chateau Nerf now. Such a great debut, and then obviously something had to be not right after his second start because he was just disappointing. But uh, as mentioned during the, the starters list, mucus and lameness following that race. So he had a couple of uh, double banger there. Yeah, so clear excuse for him. I mean, this trial was OK. He runs third in it. He wasn't really being uh, let go at all at the end. So, look, I think the 1,000 metres is going to be OK for him. So give him another chance. He definitely goes in for me. He's drawn barrier number three, Zach Purton and David Hayes, the combination. And uh, Curry, he one of the first starters in the race. Draco, the other. He's had five trials. Draco, 
Currahee has had three. This is him running third to Mufafa, and he's up outside the leader in the green and white colours. Yeah, look, he's uh, got a hood and a tongue time for his debut. He's had three trials. He's 1,056 pounds to come in. Pushed out a little bit in this trial, so he's found a nice race here. I'm happy to watch him here on his uh, debut in Hong Kong. But look, um, maybe over further uh, as well, being by US Navy flag. His other trials, he ran fifth behind Patch of Theta, led and faded in seventh behind Ewan Long Elite and was handy enough under the hold. So that's uh, a breakdown, but we saw the winner, if you're watching closely, very luckless in the replay with uh, Prosecco. Yeah, look, he, he, I think if he'd got the gap, he would have gone close to winning. So I think he can win this time, and that's number nine, Flying Phantom. Prosecco, Red Elegance, come out of that same race with Chateau Nerf, but I do like the nine in this. Nine, 13, five, three with the ghost who walks flying phantom to win race number four. Scratching in race number five, Panda Legend has come out. In comes Accordy Steps 1. Harry Bentley takes the ride on him. They line up over the 1650 metres in this class four with Galvanic placed his only time course and distance. Bear Slam, a three time course and distance winner. Haka Radiance has the pacifiers going on. G Line has won his last two over the 1650 on the dirt. First time on the surface for all riches. We've got Starship AV racing well, but yet to win in this grade. Kairos Unicorn comes back from the 1800 metres and Keen Unity is placed on the all weather that was over the 1200 metres. And G Line and All Riches are going to set up a good tempo here, Paul. Yeah, they both go like to the lead. You got Karis Teton on a G Liner and uh, Derek Lung there on All Riches. I thought Forever Charm can get a nice run up to 1650. Hacker Radiance uh, as well, he won't be far away. Cordyceps One comes into the race, he likes to go forward but is drawn wide. And he just might put that little bit of extra pace in as well. Plenty of speed in this race, and we start with Galvanic, and this is him running second last time. He does have a win on the board now, and that was three starts ago, but gets the 10-pound claim once again. Another kind draw. He leads home five others, which he's competing against in race five. I'm going to put him in. He's only a little chap, um, Galvanic, and he's, the weight relief's going to be massive for him, 135 down to 125. He's a horse that it's hard to have on a win line. He's just won one from his 15 starts. But he has definitely got ability and he really tries hard. You can see him finishing off strongly here. So, um, look, yeah, he's going to go in for me. He is in Galvanic. We move on to an in-form G-liner. He has raced on the turf since those back-to-back -back victories. Mayhem runs second, fast victory fifth. The speed that is likely going to be on will suit Bear Slam. But he can't have done any more than his last two over the 16.50 here, Paul, a G-liner. Yeah, the, the thing with poor old G-liner is they're all riches in the race because they both have got the same style. They both like to lead. Uh, as such, it should set up a nice pace. A bear slam will definitely get his chance. You can see him running on strongly enough in this race as well. I'm going to put G-liner in because he really tries hard and uh, he goes in on a minor line. That is that replay. And on to the other one, which is going to set up the pace. You just touched on him. This is All Riches. He didn't lead in a recent Chung Fa trial. He was on the pace, but happy to sit up outside of the leader. He's a two-time winner over the 1,400 metres and yet to race over the 1,650 uh, on this surface. Yeah, so he's coming to the surface for the first time. He's had uh, two goes at um, Happy Valley over the 1,650 and hasn't featured. So he's going to definitely be a pace influence. Um, the surface and the distance is just a little worried, but he has trolled well on it in the past and it was a very quiet trial from him here. Finally, you're going to make a case for Forever Charm. He's another one that is uh, coming to this surface for the first time, but the way he won this trial would suggest that he's going to handle it quite well. This is what I'm hoping for. You know, the blinkers went on him for the first time last start. This would be his second start, start up and trip. He can just sit behind that really fast pace, I think, or he could even, I mean, if he wanted to, he could lead himself, but I don't think that that's likely with those other two in the race. Uh, look, a really nice row. He was, definitely wasn't stopping over the 1,200. And his dam was placed numerous times at Pakenham on the synthetic. So there's breeding through both sides here. And there you go. That's the case for Forever Charm. And he is on top to win the fifth. Yeah, we hopefully will get a, a, a decent price from him. We should because he's finished last his last couple. So he's on top to beat Galvanic. High rise power. He, he should be able to slot in. And uh, D-liner from the front. 4, 1, 11 and 6. Each way the four. Bit of value for race number five for Paul in the first leg of the six up.
further all weather racing in race number six and it is a class four event this is the field for it must go as a last start winner carries an extra five pounds solid charla's racing well win three placings from his last four starts lucky banner has the pacifiers off hinakami kagura was scratched due a skin condition on the third of april so he missed a run then has had a trial since Smart leaders racing well. Miracles and Valiant Elegance are recent all-weather winners. And Happy Tango, the two-time course and distance. Victor Paul has fantastic choice leads, but horses like the 11, the 12 and the 10 also also show toe. Yeah, so it should be a good, good pace in this race with those uh, three in the race. Must go, should get a lovely run from barrier number four. He's a one-time winner on the surface from one, one from one. Hanakami Kagura will get his chance once again. Smart lead is a recent winner. Solid Charla has been racing well. Lucky batter. Now, he goes forward over a mile, but over 1,200 he generally goes back. This is winning form around must go. And uh, this was the horse's first look at the all weather. Took to it beautifully and beat fantastic choice by one and three quarters. Barry number three uh, this night, Barry number four on the weekend. Can he go back to back? I think he can. Uh, well, he, I think he's found his niche here. Uh, on the surface, he obviously really likes it. He's get, the race should be run under similar conditions, and uh, I think he can come off the back of Fantastic Choice and win again. I'm going to include Fantastic Choice as well, because he, he fought on really strongly to the line here. So he'll go in on a minor line as well. There they go. They both are in those two. Solid Charla, as mentioned, has been racing really consistently lately. He's down there on the rail at the moment. Robot Knight ends up running third, and... This is a big run from him. He was wide throughout. He had some cover turning for home, but he did cover plenty of ground. He did. Look, a, a good run here from um, Solid Charla. So, look, he goes in. Robot Knight was right on the cusp as well because uh, he's had two runs now in the all-weather for a four and a third, and he's been going uh, particularly well. So I tossed up between these two to put in, and uh, Solid Charla just went in and ahead of him. OK, so the white colours go in. The yellow colours just miss out. And as we head to some trial form now, everyone's victory is... In this one, he's a horse that um, is a three-time course and distance winner. He ends up running second in this trial behind Viva Allah. And Hinakami Kagura, he too's found a liking to this surface. Yeah, of the two, I'm going to put Hinakami Kagura in. Um, he's had two goes on the surface for a second and a fourth. And he, he was going uh, better in the trial, I think, here of the, of the two. Uh, everyone's choice, victory was pushed out a little bit. But he be, hasn't been informed for a long period of time, so I couldn't have him, but I can have Hinakami Kagura. And if you like Viva Alar that won the trial, you can wait for Wednesday night. He's in at Happy Valley, but uh, must go to make it two for two. I think he can. He's really sort of found his niche in this race, uh, must go. So he's on top to beat Hinakami Kagura. Fantastic choice from the front and solid Charla, one eight four two. That's a win for Brenton Abdullah. He rides for John Size in race number six. Good race, race number seven, with a couple of informed ones at the top of the book to tangle again. Laugh Tail and California Totality, they are the, they're both drawn wide, 13 and 14. We've got Beer Palace with the tongue tie on for the first time. Flying Mojito is a two-time course and distance winner. Soaring Broncos won a trial since his last start. Celtic Times is a professional place getter. Smart Fighter, first time at 1,600 metres. And Forever Folks, one on the all-weather last time, carries an extra couple of pounds. Laugh Tail and California Totality Paul to spot the wide draws. They'll charge across together. I think they're going to have to. Um, I mean, there's the option of Bear Palace and Smart Fighter kicking up, but I think both of them have shown really good pace in their recent runs. There's a decent run to that first bend as well, 1,600 metre bend so at start. So as such, I think they can both go across. Celtic Times might be a little bit tough for him uh, from his draw. CP1's been going back forever, folks, and Joy of Spring will have to go back as well. And to further confirm that he's going back, here's Casper Founds talking Joy of Spring. Casper, another week and another bad draw for poor Joy of Spring. Yeah, story of my life, mate. Uh, the draws haven't been kind to us these last couple of months, but uh, it is what it is. Horse presents well again, you know. Um, wide gate going to a mile at Shartin, I think uh, will, will be quite suitable for him. It's only a slightly framed horse, but his fitness is, level is very good. And um, Vincent on top, so hopefully with a, with a nice ride and a bit of tempo up front, he should be, should be closing off hard. If there is a bonus, the other horses that are in form in that race have also drawn wide even outside you, such as California Totality. Yeah, look, there's, for, a, for a class four race, there's a bit of depth in it. But um, this is a horse that's uh, on the way up and he's got, he's got some points in hand.
ideally the speed goes on? Are the starts still a bit of a work in progress with him? Yeah, at this stage, look, you know, we're going to be riding him back anyway. So, like, in, in the future when he starts to draw a gate and, and know what it's all about, um, you know, then we'll be thinking about wherever he's handy. But at this stage, we just go back from the gate and, and leave it to Vincent. Back here on Wednesday night, congratulations. 1,100 wins in Hong Kong and, and what a win by Kaholo Angel to bring it up with. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was great. Um, yeah, it was a good effort, wasn't it? Um, he closed off really well. So um, hopefully he's a horse that, uh, that can go on with it now. You're still enjoying things? 1,100 winners, you still get that uh, urge to get up and do the training every morning? Yeah, no, we're happy. You know, everything's good. And just hopefully you can continue to try to get some nice uh, quality horses in the stable and uh, just keep going and see how we go. And you've got Ronan working very closely with you and he's been in uh, most of the presentations recently. Yeah, no, it's always great to have, uh, you know, any family member working with you, following you in your footsteps. And I'm very blessed and happy that uh, Ronan's with me. So it's, it's all good. There he is, Mr. 1100 Casper Founds talking joy of spring. California totality and laugh tale here, Paul. Had a great battle in this uh, race there. Up outside the speed turning for home. Ping High Comet Celtic Times also figures in this replay with absolute sunshine. What about the result this week? Same again? Yep. Uh, same Quinella. I, I, I like these two horses. I think they're both really progressive horses. California Totality really found his niche when he stepped up to this mile. He's had three starts over the mile. He ran fourth and then he's gone bang, bang. Laugh Tail, uh, look, he's been going really well for uh, Manfred Mann this season as well. Hugh Bowman aboard. So I think they'll battle it out again. But look, California Totality definitely had the... Um, the wood on him there. The horse that ran third, keep an eye on him on Wednesday night. Can't go wrong. OK. Might be a last run reminder. Yes. There you go. So there's uh, a bit of a, a pointer going forward out of that race. Flying Mojito here, Paul. He runs a second and Smart Fighter fourth. Not sure what to make of Smart Fighter. He's disappointed on that run a couple of starts ago where he had that good draw. He's since run fourth behind Lucky Gold. He seems to run the same race no matter where he draws. Yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to watch him for those reasons. Fly Mahito I'm going to put in though. His last win was a 59. He's down to a 56 rating and he did catch the eye finishing off strongly here as well. Fly Mahito. So I think uh, he's a good challenger to those top two as well. Flying Mahito. No one doesn't win out of turn but he's had two wins in five seconds from his 19 starts. So he is a, uh, consistent at least on a place line. He wins off rating 59 and 51. He runs off rating 56 in this race. So the Molotov cocktail's in on a minor line. Who else is in? He is. I'm going to go with the top two here. Um, I think it'll be the same Quinella, same result. California Totality, Laugh Tale. Both have to come across from their wide draws. Uh, Bear Palace, now he put in a really good run two starts ago behind Divas 12. He's drawn nicely in four with a tongue tie on for the first time. He's an alternative leader if he wants to make it hard for them because he did go forward um, last start and at least anyway. And then Flying Mojito in there for fourth. Two, one, four and five. Two and one to Quinella again and there's a theme through the third and fourth selections there for Paul in race number seven. Race number eight is run over the 1,200 metres and competed on the turf. With I'm a single man back in form, Young Achiever has his first start. He's had four trials, the former German Guineas winner at Cologne. Solid impact racing well. Better Link has had three trials ahead of his first start. Ladies Choice, two-time course and distance winner. Tongue ties go on Call Me Glorious and Sea Air Legend. And down the bottom, Sunny Darling, who's won a trial, has the visor off and the pacifiers with cowls going on. Call Me Glorious, he's look smart. Pull two starts for a win, a second and straight to the front. Yeah, look, I'm a single man's gone forward in his last two starts for a win and a second as well. So he should go forward. Parterre likes to go forward, but it could be trapped wide. Prawns 11 uh, was in the trial when he won his race. Ladies' Choice likes to go forward as well. A better link, he's a, a debutante here. I think you have to go back from his wide draw. I'm a single man, looked like his uh, name was going to appear on the retirement list at some stage. And all of a sudden, credit Tony Cruz, he's just turned him around at his last two starts. He was too good for E Legend, then second behind James Tack here. And we know. James Tack is well above average. Seemed to be winning that trial up at Chung Fa was the turning point for him. Was, wasn't it? Maybe just that, that trip up to Chung Fa, full stop, really helped this horse. Uh, he's put himself on, on the pace and he's run well. I mean, Koholo Angels come out of this race and won uh, midweek. Is, so it has come out of a strong form race, but um, it's just whether he can go on with it. He's, he's done it nicely. The, the thing that worries me a little bit about him is with this uh, other leader in the race, he could just... Um, 
be taking on a bit of a speed battle there. And he does go up five pounds in weight for that placing too, even with the claim for Angus. Ladies' choice is down on the inside here running third. Has been favourite at his last two starts. He is off a rating of 66. His highest winning rating so far is 53. Yeah, he's been creeping up by being placed. And sometimes these horses are victims of their own success or their consistency, uh, likely in these handicap ratings. Look, I'm going to include him again I'm on a minor line, not on top here. Uh, ladies' choice. He'll go in as the Quinella horse. Uh, I mean, Hasten Delight did beat him nicely here. Champion Insect's been in really good form recently as well. So, um, look, he goes in. He, he's consistent. And uh, we'll move on now to our next replay, which is the impressive Call Me Glorious. He was beaten here. The horse that beat him is Kaying Rising, so nothing wrong with running second to him. Part fourth, and Solid Impact just keeps appearing from nowhere late in his races. Of course, he won two starts ago and then was third in this one. Yeah, David Hall's got this horse going really well at the moment, uh, Solid Impact, so he's going to go in on a minor line. But I think there's rating points in hand here for Call Me Glorious. He was just unlucky he ran into Kaying Rising here, who's a horse on the up and up, and they were well clear of anything else. And he fought really strongly, um, Call Me Glorious. So both both runs have been really good. He'll go straight to the front as well. So uh, I think he's, he looks tough to beat, and Solid Impact in there on a minor line. He has been back to the trials, has Call Me Glorious since that. And he met the newcomer in the race, which is Young Achiever. Call Me Glorious wins the trial. Young Achiever runs third. He's had four trials in total. And Zach Purton rides him for Jamie Richards. Now, all his wins overseas were over 1,600 metres. Uh, in fact, all his runs were over 1,600 metres. He came off soft ground. But he did win on a good ground as well, so th that shows you his versatility. His trial was good, he finished on strongly, but I just wonder if 1,200 is going to be too short with some of these um, sharp sprinters in the race. So I've, I've got him in because uh, I think there's ability there, and I'm really looking forward to seeing him once he gets up to a mile. But the edge at this stage with Cormac Glorious. Yeah, he's got the race fitness, he's had those two starts under his belt, and he's run well, and the distance suits him. Ladies' choice consistent, young achiever, and solid impact. Seven, six, two, and four. And that is race number eight. It's the first leg also of the late treble. Race number nine, it's a class two and it's over the distance of 1,800 metres. I think it's underway at 5.15 local time. All for St Paul's has had two goes at the trip and he's placed both times. Flaming Rabbit, a last start winner. Extra nine pounds for it though. Five weeks between races for La City Blanche. Chilchibi comes out of the four-year-old series. Sweet Encounter is back up in grade. Alacrity has the cheek pieces going on. And Speed Dragon, he comes out of all three of the four-year-old series races. The Mile, the Cup and the Derby. The speed here, Paul, is from Flaming Rabbit. We know all for St Paul's has pace, but the rabbit left like a rocket last time. He did, he bounded out, went straight to the front, didn't he? And he was uh, clear and awesome for St Paul's couldn't match him. So I think it'll be something similar in this. Sweet Encounter's drawn 10, but look, there's no other speed really in the race. So I think he could come across. CP Brave can get a nice run just in behind Alacrity. And the horse that ran fourth in the derby, Chil Chibi, should settle midfield. And on Chil Chibi, he is to be ridden by Jerry Chow. Jerry, back on Chil Chibi again this week. He must have been very proud of his job during the four-year-old series. Yes, he did a very good job. He beat some good horses in the 2,000 meter, and 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 now back to class two, and I think he's very competitive. He never raced at Sha Tin before the four-year-old series. He obviously took the the step across to the bigger track quite easily. Yes, um, but he handling well, and the, the before Derby 1800 meter one, he won a very good uh, uh, final st stage, and and I looking for his his uh, doing a good job uh, tomorrow Saturday. You've had a uh, trial on him since that last start. Were you happy with the way he trialled? Yeah, he, he normally he trial he just very casual. He he wouldn't overusing his um, energy or, or he just did uh, enough work for for the for the race. And I I'm very happy with his trial. Yeah. You also rode him in his final gallop on Wednesday. Was that good also? Yeah, um, then he um, just um, want to just sit together with the other horse and he. He finished off very strong and he tried to beat the other horse and, and I think he he doing well now. As you said earlier, back to 1,800 metres this week. He's won over that distance here at the Valley. Is that his best trip at the moment? Um, with, with the form, look like he, he the, is, is the best um, distance, is, is 1,800. And, but I think he, he can handle longer distance for the future. 
on form. You're on 26 wins this season, 22 last year, so you're already in front. Have you got a target you'd like to get to? Things are going well. Uh, actually, not, not, not much target. Just um, try to do everything right and, and get the much winner as possible. It's Jerry Chow talking about Chul Chibi. He's going to have to stop flaming rabbit, though. Here he is, uh, Paul, last time. This is the way he... He always gets out quick, but he used to get out last season like this, and he really turned it back here. And there's all for St Paul, who, as we know, is no slouch out of the gates as well. He just couldn't get anywhere near him. No, he couldn't, could he? Now, look, he's up in distance, so he's up to the 1,800 metres. So they're going to have to try and conserve energy with him. He's run over 1,700 overseas on a really soft track and finished about fourth or fifth uh, that day, but he wasn't really suited by the track. So I'm not totally so worried about the distance. He's got to carry the extra weight, so that's more of a little bit of an issue, I think. Up nine pounds. Look, he's going to be in front for a long period of the race, I think. He'll look like the winner at some stage. I said that about Super Axiom, and he did look like the winner. He actually did win. He won well. So he'll be trying to do something like that and just keep going. Um, look, it was a good race, this. This is Mugen in that running second. So uh, second or third there, wasn't he? Third in the end. And, um, yeah, look, I think he's a chance. He goes in. We'll see Mugen on a Champions Day, of course. We move on now to the 600-metre mark here where there's quite a few horses coming out of this race. CP Brave runs second. Sweet Encounter is wide. Packing Hurricane, he finishes sixth. And the best peach runs on Natural Storm is back at the tail end. CP Brave has been going terrific races over the 1,800 metres. The best peach has been in good form, but is normally pretty pace dependent isn't he? He's definitely pace dependent they they went really quick in this race Fran Tank set up a really good pace in front and as, a, as such it gave the best peach something to run at. He came out of group 2 company last time, he wasn't suited by that, He um, coming back here to handicap looks a lot more uh, his go. I'm going to put him in on a minor line because there is pace in this race and he will be finishing fast. And that's a good report for the best peach Karis Teton rides him for Tony Cruz from a nice draw of barrier number 2 Chira Mascot is our final replay. Here he is on the all-weather running second last time. Um, he's had two wins, both over 2,200 metres, and he has placed two from six over the 1,800 metres on the turf. Uh, three zip at Shouten, done absolutely nothing. Comes into a class two race. Better on the all-weather and at Happy Valley for me, so... I think this is a bit rich for him. I, I, I can't have him in this. He doesn't go in. That's Apache Pass on the outside. And then Unicorn storming down the outside to get up right at the winning post. So Turin Mascot is not in, but who is? Yeah, going to go with uh, the six uh, horse here on top. Uh, and I think he can win the race, Chil Chibi. The only query I've got is he's never won at Sha Tin. But in saying that, the only two runs he's had comes out of the 40-year-old series. And he did run fourth in the derby. So I think he can finish over the top of Flaming Rabbit. Last City Plants and the best peach should get the race runs to suit as well. 6-2-4-5. Derby form is good form for Jill Chibi to win race number nine. Saturday racing closes down at 10 minutes to 6 o'clock with a class three over the 1,400 metres. And Chu Chow Spirit carries six more pounds on that win two starts ago. Fun together, raced wide last time. Magnificent Nine has the blinkers going on. Satirical Fan has the blinkers coming off. Smart City makes his Hong Kong debut. Beauty Missile has placed his last three. Skyheart comes up in grade and will have blinkers on for the first time. Amazing duck leads here, pulled over fun together and Smart City. Yeah, look, he likes to lead the duck, so I think he can go forward. Uh, lead fun together, likes to go forward. Smart City is a debutante, but it's showing speed. Satirical fan might do it tough from his wide draw. Patch of Theatre and Magnificent Nine likely to both be in the market, and they're both uh, likely to get good runs. Sky Hart with blinkers on for the first time. We'll see where he ends up. He'll try and slot on their midfield. And Oriental Tycoon is another debutante, but no early speed. Karis Teton is a man for the last race. This is his thoughts on his ride, Beauty Missile. Karis, Beauty Missile, tough draw this week, but the horse is racing well. Yeah, thanks, Mark. Uh, it's going to be hard from that draw, but uh, like you said, he's been racing really well. He's been knocking on the door now, so if he does get the right run from that draw, he, he, he's going to be competitive. What's the sort of right run that is the best for him? Well, I think just to get him sort of comfortable uh, where he doesn't have to be uh, chasing for a, for, for a run or, or pulling him back. I think just to get him smooth and uh, comfortable. He's got the right weight on his back uh, from that draw. So, you know, going to the race, I know that draw is a bit uh, in, in concern, but really confidence he's going to run good again. 
You have to take on Patch of Theta. He's a horse you know well, um, having ridden him a couple of starts ago. Your guy got the speed to, to trouble him if the race goes to, to plan? Yes, of course. Uh, he's, he's a really smart horse, that horse. Uh, I think he's got a lot to improve still. But like you said now, if uh, my horse get the right run, I think he'll be really competitive against him. Happy Valley, what a night, Wednesday night. You managed to get Churumori home in front of your parents. That wasn't easy to do. No one else had been able to do it. Yeah, well, I, I, I did not know it was after so many start years and one, and he's, he's an old six years old. But I must say Manfred had him in great form. Uh, his last one was great run. I was good to get, get the win on him. Chiramori, yeah, he finally delivered and uh, Mr and Mrs Teton in town to see it also. But uh, he'll need to be good, Paul. Will uh, Beauty Missile because Patch of Theta is well above average. He's unbeaten in two starts over the 1,400 metres and Magnificent Nine hasn't been too far away and both of them are drawn much better than poor old Beauty Missile. They have, unfortunately, for Beauty Missile. But look, good runs from both. Now, um, Magnificent Nine was a little bit wide in this race. He won't be uh, on uh, Saturday because... He's got a lot better draw. He's got blinkers on for the first time. I think he can overturn it with Patch of Theatre, but um, th this is definitely the Quinella for me, these two. This is a strong race they've come out of, but I think Magnificent Nine can overturn Patch of Theatre, the ISG. All right, that is uh, that pair. What about Sky Hart? You mentioned uh, during the speed map, he has the blinkers on. He's trialled down the straight at uh, Sha Tin. He wins this trial, beating... Uh, Gusta Sissimo, who's won the trial at Happy Valley on Friday morning, and he looks well above average. Yeah, who'd be a commentator with that name? But look, a really nice uh, run here from the Sky Hart. The blinkers, he's obviously uh, sharpened him up a little bit. Look, he might try and press on from his wide draw. He's in there for third. He comes in with a light weight. Um, but barrier number 11 just worried me a little bit where he's going to end up. He's up against some smarties in this race, but he's quite above average himself. I just call that second horse Gus when he gets to race day and make it nice and easy. Chu Chow Spirit, he has a win on the board now. He has been a little costly at times since he's been here. He's uh, a winner on the 10th of December. We haven't seen him since New Year's Day, so this is his trial win over Hong Kong Hall. He's actually had roaring surgery since then as well. So he had uh, roaring surgery back in January. Um, so let's see if it's worked. It, uh, the trial seems to indicate that he's gone nice enough. Again, he's, he's, he's found a really hard race to kick back off. He's got to carry 135 as well, so it'll be a massive effort if he wins this. That is Golden 60 running third in that trial, and we'll see the return of the King, of course, on Champions Day. Who do you like in the last? Going to go with uh, Magnificent Nine. I think he can win and uh, beat uh, Patch of Theatre. It's going to be a good race, this one. Sky Hart, one at, at odds. I think it's number 13. Let's do it. Did catch the eye when he was finishing off really strongly at his last start. Comes in with a light weight. Keegan DeMillo from Barrier 4. 4-3, 14, 13. Let's do it. Saturday afternoon from 1 o'clock, 10 races at Shah 10. Six on the turf and C plus three. Four on the all-weather for the first of 10 for a Saturday. Yes, a Saturday at Shah 10.